What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with your boy Thick Whips and Mr. Chris Boost. Today obviously we are in a different garage. We're in Chris's garage. Huge thank you to this guy for helping me install the meth kit today and house us. Today we are installing the AEM methanol injection kit on the Supra. We also got some boost juice that uh, hopefully at the end of this, we can throw this in. Now this car right now, it's not tuned for methanol, but in the next few days, we will be tuning the car for methanol. We'll have a meth map, and then we can go ahead and bring it to the dyno and, and get some proper numbers on this car. Today is just gonna be the install on the meth kit. Now, Brian did a really, really good in-depth, step-by-step tutorial video on how to install this kit on this exact same car with my friend Bill. Uh, you guys might know him as Supra Officer on Instagram but they did a great video on it. So I'm not gonna just repeat exactly what they already did because let's be honest, the Godfather already killed it. <laughs> There's no point in us going ahead and, and making the exact same video. What I'm gonna do for you guys is kind of give you my review or my insight on installing a meth kit for the first time. I've never installed a meth kit. Chris, have you installed a meth kit before? Yeah. First time for both of us. It doesn't seem that difficult. It just seems like one of those things that you just take your time uh, be patient with the process and really follow it step by step and you will get it done. I will let you guys know honestly how long it takes us to install this kit. I will let you know if we run into any like weird hiccups. Basically just give you guys my insight on installing a meth kit for the first time. So it should be a good one you guys. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right, guys, so we have the uh, the meth kit here. Now, first of all, everything that you see in this video is going to be linked down below. Um, I do have Boost Juice, which is actually something that you can just order on Amazon. And then we obviously have the methanol injection kit as well as, this is a custom bracket uh, made for the Supra by P-Tuned, offered up by Keys Motorsports, that basically takes the reservoir, the methanol reservoir, and allows us to install it into the engine compartment where it's kind of hidden. You don't have to like customize anything. Like it's like basically just bolts right up to the, I believe the firewall. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But basically this just connects to the reservoir and allows us to install it into the engine bay of the Supra. So like I said before, if, it, if we come across anything that's like kind of weird or funky, um, we'll let you guys know. I think that the biggest thing will be like the wiring section. Um, figuring out what needs to go where. I do also want to note, you guys, there are some other things that we have here that I went and grabbed just in case. Um, this is Teflon tape. I've got some electrical tape, some 3M, some zip ties, two different sizes. This is like Tessa tape, Temflex, I guess they call it. Uh, it's basically like that friction tape that you see in your engine bay that's like covering like this stuff. It's that. <laughs> it's like heat resistant tape. Um, we have some of that, and then we have E6000. Uh, Brian was talking about using this. So I will link all this stuff down below if you guys need it. First plan of action, obviously we're gonna take off the engine cover, just pops right off. It's also important to note that we have the FTP charge pipe on this Supra on my car, and that has the bung, which allows us to just tap right into it with the, the methanol kit. There are a lot of benefits to running a uh, meth injection. One being you're gonna lower your IATs, Two, you're gonna be cleaning out the valves in the car by using a meth kit. So really when you run a meth kit, you definitely have to have a tune that is particularly set up for running meth. What you're doing is actually reducing the IATs in the engine, which allows you to run a more aggressive tune with more aggressive timing, but you need to have that methanol kit running with a methanol produced tune. Just simply adding the methanol kit to a car without the tune is not really gonna benefit you. It's also important to note that if you are gonna run the methanol kit, you need to make sure that you have enough meth in the car while you are running that particular methanol tune. If you run out of methanol and you are running that more aggressive tune, that more aggressive timing, that could potentially be a problem. So we're gonna get into this and I'll just basically update you guys along the way as we get into it. And if I come across anything that's funky or weird or whatever, I'll let you guys know. Look at my boy over here building the 2JZ. <laughs> Chris is getting after it. Um, also, you guys were wondering about his F30. I believe he sold it. He's got a couple of guys coming by this weekend. I know that we'll be needing to access this. There's an adapter that's gonna plug in underneath that. We gotta take this guy off and back here, this is where you can access the firewall. And there's also like this little drain, like plastic drain tube thing that we gotta take out. And then we'll be running everything, all the wiring through the firewall into the glove compartment. Now P-Tuned also makes a, like a gauge cluster 
for your glove compartment and it's like a carbon fiber piece that goes across and houses that AEM controller, that MEF controller. But the thing is, you know, it takes away, basically eliminates your glove compartment. It, it looks really cool, it's really nice. I almost ordered it, but then I realized this car already suffers from lack of space for storage. I don't think your boy's gonna run that. I think that we're just gonna, uh, my thought is to just basically get some Velcro and just Velcro it to the side. You don't really like need this, all the time like you don't need to be able to like see it all the time you basically set it and forget it and what these controls are doing are just telling the meth kit when to start so at which boost psi that methanol is going to kick in and then when you want it to be full bore so you'll see here like if we wanted it to start at five psi and you know full gas at like 25 but that's the idea of what this is doing so this isn't something that you like need to see all the time so in my opinion the way to do it would be to just have like double-sided velcro and pop it in there like that or whatever. That way you're not taking up all the space and it's in there and it's, you know, if you need it, you can just drop down the glove compartment and it's right here. So that's that's how I think I'm gonna run it. And then all the wiring will be taken off this. All the wiring will be back here through that firewall and there's a little plastic piece that we pop out to run the wires. Um, all right, cool, we're gonna get into it. I'll update you guys as we go along. All right, so we got this little guy off, plastic piece that goes over here. You just got these stupid little <laughs> crush clips on that. And then back here is where we are gonna be feeding the wires through. You'll see this plastic drain piece right here that we do have to remove in order to get the, the tank in. And it's basically just held in by clips. So we'll remove this as well. Then that'll give us the room to put in the tank. Again, this is gonna be hard to feed through a fire. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> We're following along. What if Brian had your beard? <laughs> oh my God, that would be amazing. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, thanks for uh, teaching us, Brian. If you look on the back, it gives you all of the coding. Depending on what color it is, it's all color coded with the functions, so it's like really easy to follow. Everything is gonna get fed through the firewall right here. You actually just remove this little square fabric piece, and then you have that hole right there. So we'll stick a, through, a screwdriver through there so we can feed the wires. And then we plug this guy in here, and we install that into the glove compartment. Then we can go ahead and start working on everything in here. We will be tapping a couple of wires into the fuse box as well. All right, so we got the little AM controller um, ran through. So this is definitely gonna be like the biggest pain for you guys when you're doing this. And like I said before, the way I'm gonna set this up, we're gonna clean up some of this wiring harness, but we're gonna have it just mounted in here on the side, something like that on the side of the glove compartment, we'll figure that out later. Uh, we got the boost line running right here and then all of the wires that need to go into the engine bay. If you look in here, that's how the wires need to be ran. So you gotta make sure that you run all the wires underneath this black bracket right here because when you close this, that's gonna move. And so if you put it on top of it, obviously it's gonna pinch that. Definitely wanna make sure that you have a little bit of slack up here so when we actually mount this in, there's more room in here. Um, and then we are gonna use some Tessa tape on this loom to just kind of clean everything up and make sure it doesn't get in the way of anything and that it's not pinched. So these three right here are the ones that end up staying in the engine compartment and they get tapped into a fuse under here, I believe. But all the rest of it gets fed through the engine compartment and we already handled that. I'll show you guys what that looks like. You're gonna remove this thing, this little fabric thing from the firewall. And then if you look in here, here's that boost wire coming through. And then what we ended up doing was putting a X and a hole in the grommet. Um, we made sure that the hole was big enough to not pinch that boost line. But in addition to that, we're gonna put some Tessa tape on it and some of this E6000 um, to make sure that no water gets in there. And I believe this actually repels methanol and water. So none of that can eat through into the wire. This is by far the most tedious part though. Um, running the stuff through there, you gotta run like a little wire and then connect it to the wire and pull the wire through. It's just not a lot of room to work with. But once you get through that, I think the rest of it's gonna be pretty, pretty straightforward. All right, took the time to Tessa tape this uh, loom up right here. And the reason you wanna do this is because, well, one, it just looks better. But two, because you don't want all these wires feeding through in here, um, just exposed like that, could catch something. So I think it's gonna be a lot easier if you just have it covered in Tessa like that. Oh yeah, so they're making Super clean so setup, dude. Just on the side there. Uh, I, so, uh, you can see the wires coming through right there. So the nice thing about this little, we just mounted this uh, tank to the bracket and then this bracket goes on the actual reservoir. The nice thing about this little bracket, it's got these rubber, like we call them airbags. This is like bag, we're bagged out. <laughs> it's got these little like rubber grommets in here that 
that um, cushion it. So it'll uh, reduce any vibration. So you won't hear like a bunch of noise coming no from the engine. Yeah, no vibrators here. So I ran, I originally was gonna run my LED like over here, but I ended up running it over here, up by the top of this pillar. But basically the purpose of the LED is just to let you know when the meth is actually spraying. So as soon as the meth starts spraying, the LED turns on. And then once the meth is done spraying, the LED turns off. I just ran it through here, basically where my dash cam goes. It runs all the way through here. And here we have everything tucked away, nice and smooth. This is like a little bit tough to close because of how thick this loom is. So I might cut like a little piece out in the back of the glove compartment. You'll never see it. It's a tiny little piece so there's more room for this to move around. It's not terrible, you can still close it and open it, but it's got a little bit of friction in there because of how tight it is. You just wanna make sure that when you're running these, you're not pinching that boost cable. This guy right here is gonna be tapped into the fuse box. We're gonna do that later. Right now we're just gonna get that tank mounted up and then that's gonna be installed right here. So we'll have to pull all this stuff back. Might have to pull this off in order to get a little more access. Use some of that E6000. They're nice and globbed, bro. Oh yeah, it's nice and globbed. Albert Einstein out here. Just busted out the flux capacitor to solder some wires. What do we got happening here, man? We're twisting some wires together the proper way. We're gonna solder her Solder her nice and good. Mm -hmm. Nice and tight. All right, so the white wire and the brown wire, they read how much methanol is actually in the tank. And it plugs into this little guy right here. So there's a plug that comes out of there. Whichever method you want to use, whether you want to twist them together and use some, some tape or you want to be a baller and solder them like, like my man over here doing it correctly. Uh, but your white and your, your brown one coming out of this plug, this plug goes into that tank. Um, that's going to read how much methanol is actually in that tank. <laughs> Tank in, you got two bolts on this side, one bolt on that side. Kind of a pain in the ass to get to, but you gotta take your time with it. We had some funky little accessories to help us get these bolts in, but um, we're good, everything's good. So now we're just working on the wiring stuff, uh, tucking some of this away, getting things cleaned up. I'm gonna use some of that Tessa tape, and then we can start running our boost lines and all that stuff. We're almost there, we're like 75% in. All right, back at it again. It's a new day, let me explain. The boost tap that you need for the B58 to do this is, I thought it was included in the AEM kit. Well, it's not. So we got like halfway, well more than halfway, like three quarters of the way through this install and realized that we need the boost tap in order to tap in the boost line to right here. We're picking up from where we left off. There are a couple of things that I did um, in the meantime and I will show you guys that in a little bit. One of them, you're gonna have to tap a fuse tap with the yellow wire into fuse F65. And I'm gonna throw up a diagram right here so you can see all the fuses. They're right underneath your glove compartment. F65 is a fuse that turns off five minutes or like 20 minutes after the car turns off. So that is what you want, an accessory fuse. It takes two five amp fuses. Plug that in, you're good to go. Other than that, you guys saw that I ran the LED. So that LED is actually there for when the meth kit is actually spraying. So when this when the spray is on, when it's when I'm in boost and that meth is spraying, that LED is going to light up and let me know that it is spraying. We got a couple more lines that we have to run this guy. And then of course go ahead and put that little boost tap in right there. So the boost tap was the thing that was holding us back. Um, I just assumed that it was in the AEM kit. I guess it's not. <laughs> so I'm gonna link everything down below, including the boost tap that you need. We're so close. We're like 80, 90% of the way there. So we're using the bung right now in the charge pipe and we're gonna put in the meth jet. And I, I guess we're gonna, we're gonna send her with some of this E6000. Instinctively, you feel like you need to have this jet flush with the charge pipe, like in that bung hole. <laughs> But in reality, you don't want that. As long as the jet is in there and you have a, a tight seal, you're good. You just don't want to over tighten it. So we went with the middle jet. The only way to tell is they're either like more aggressive or less aggressive, and they have all these fins on them. You'll understand if you buy the meth kit and you're like installing it, you'll know what I mean. But we went with the middle one. 
So what he's doing is we're putting a little bit of Teflon tape where that boost tap is. Valve piece, I guess, what would you call it? Like spout valve or whatever? Yeah, it's the nipple. <laughs> it's the, the better, old dude. I like that better, dude. So putting a little bit of Teflon on that nipple because it doesn't look completely flush. Right. And so that just makes now sense you to feel me. Like really tight. Yeah, now it's just, a, yeah, much more tight. So that boost tap, um, it goes literally right underneath here. And you could cut the line and tap into the boost, but I don't want to be cutting lines on this. So that boost tap's going to go right in here. And that's how we're going to read our boost. And that's what is going to tell the uh, methanol kit, like when to fire off at what PSI. Other than that, we should be good. So that's really what was holding us up before um, we didn't, I didn't have that. Partially my fault because I just like kind of assumed that it was in the AEM kit and it's not, it's a separate piece that you have to buy. So it's like 60 bucks or something. I'll also link that down below, like I said before, so you guys have it. So we're gonna drop this guy in yep. with the O-ring down. Yep. All right, then we're gonna drop this O-ring and uh, pipe on top of this. So we stack them. Yep. Then we're gonna drop the new extended T25. So this is something that was I was told about before, um, and we're just gonna go ahead and take care of it now. You'll notice that this like little nipple is hitting the plastic. So what we're gonna do is just Dremel out this little, like a tiny little notch right here, and that'll allow this nipple to um, take in that new boost line. Holy shit. Look at that. So you guys can see what we did. We just notched this out right here. This little plastic fin, not gonna hurt anything. So we just notched that out so we can run the boost line, the, the actual line that goes into this nipple. All right, so we're gonna run some of these lines right now. First of all, let's just take this little guy and pop it on here. She's on there. So we got that guy on there. And now what we wanna do is we wanna run this line that is coming for the boost. So there's a little canal underneath the cowl right behind this rubber. Oh yeah, and it just pops right in there. So the idea is to do this. Um, this is probably how we'll run it. So we'll end up cutting it like right here. I'll just go cut it. Just cut that line, insert it in there. there together. And then we officially have it ran. All right, so we're running the uh, line for the jet now. And so it comes out over here. Like made for it. <laughs> Look at this, dude. You just nestle it in that little canal. It's like made for it. That's, that's how you know it's a tuner car, Doc. We have to run this cable over to this jet, right? This bung. And we want to do it as stealth as possible. I think what you want to do is we cut it right around your hand. It'll ride at top, we'll put a couple of small zip ties so there's a wire on there. And we'll ride that little wire under there and then we'll come up here and kind of angle it. So we found a new canal. We kind of like the idea of coming out here with this and then using these factory little notches to hold it down. And then you have a really good angle when you come back out of here right into the jet right there. Go straight under here, boom, hit that angle. Yeah, so look at that angle though, how that's like perfect. If you run it underneath here. How do you want this slack right you here? You could do it like that, you could like hide it, but it, but your angle would be a little too gnarly. So I think that like right up here is fine. And plus it looks OEM running right there. They also make a carbon like cover right here. So if you wanted to buy that, it would cover all of it. So we're chopping the line for it. And then we're literally just gonna throw her into the bung, which is right there. This is a push fitting on the bung, so we're gonna just watch him insert the, the tube in the bung. <laughs> yep, I just felt it going. And just look at this routing, guys. Yeah, baby. It's routed on factory um, clips. Or clips. Good, good and words. you have, and the cool thing is, is you can like move this in and out so you have room. If you really wanted to, we could go all crazy and go back here, but I don't think that's necessary. No, it looks OEM. It yeah, looks like it, that's like a Like no one anything. is gonna know. And you could also even run it underneath, but we're good, that's fine. Um, I think I will zip tie this right here. Yeah. Just to be a nerd. This angle looks chill. We're in. That's our jet, can't pull it out. Send it. Send it, bro!
Let's throw the Mickey Thompsons on. Let's light, let's get a race lined up. Well, so here's a setup, super clean, thick style. Thick style bro. Running right on the factory clips. Oh, I need a better. Down, right here, nice and hidden. Comes under the plastic, up and through to the tank. Awesome. Yeah, baby. Some zip tying going on. Super clean, super OE. I mean, we're, dude, we're pretty much there. So now we're gonna figure out the wiring part, but all like the boost and the jets are ran. Like we're done with all of this. This is like so clean. I love this. So they, like I said before, they make a, they make a cover. I think it's APR, they make a carbon cover for this. So you could literally cover all this up. You'd never see it. You'd never see any of it. Can't see any of these boost lines. This is all gonna get covered by that plastic piece back here. Yo, this whole kit is so stealth. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this down. And this wire is coming off the controller. So we're splicing in the power to the constant power. My boy over here, the wiring god, is going to make it look clean. And then we're going to use the ground, the black wire that comes for the controller. We're just going to ground it on one of those little 10 millimeter bolts back there. It's hot. So, uh, so we just need about this much wire right here. Yeah, we don't need much, dude. So we're taking the negative and we're gonna tap it into that little 10 millimeter bolt and then we'll be good. So we got the power coming from the controller into the constant power. We have the black from the controller going into this, uh, the negative um, grounded. And then we have these two guys coming off of the actual pump and these are gonna get tapped into two wires that are coming off the controller. We're gonna figure out those colors right now. All right, so the red that's coming off of the pump is gonna go to pink on the controller. Next up is the orange to the black. So the black that's coming off of the pump, going to the orange that's on the controller. All right, so these two wires, this brown and white wire, we didn't use the optional solenoid, so we don't need to worry about that. And the green also don't need to worry about that. So we're gonna go ahead and just loom these up together, zip tie them, and then just nestle them down gently. And then we're just gonna go and we're gonna throw those Mickeys on. Why don't you show them the Mickeys that we're throwing them on? There, and then uh, and we're gonna just send it. Digs only, guys. Garbon fiber drive shaft over here. Yep, yep, all that. Tremec uh, six speed T56 transmission, Magnum. Yeah, so the meth kit, the meth, all the meth doing is just so we can spin this bad boy right here. <laughs> A little turbo. Small snail. Are we planning to fill the tank tonight or no? 10 horsepower. I think so. <laughs> as far as this is concerned, so when you fill it up, you obviously will need to lift this up. And we'll have to use some sort of funnel. So I'll have to buy a funnel. You probably have one, don't you? Uh, maybe, we'll look. I'll funnel. have to buy a funnel for when I do fill it up. And then obviously you just fill the tank up right there. Do you and know how long the tank, uh, tank will last? Nope. Well, I'll be figuring that out and I'll be making a video talking about how long uh, the meth lasts, like when I'm just driving, like daily driving without punching it. And then how long, if I'm really like sending it, how long it lasts. So people can kind of gauge for themselves, like how much meth you're going to need for how long and all that good stuff. No more meth. See, no meth now. You're fully hidden. What meth? And then obviously like you got these up here that just look super OEM, you know, like you could have ran them down here, but I honestly like your idea better of doing it like this. I think it looks a lot better. All of this is chill, super hidden, looks good. It smells like Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this spout, definitely a must have, because that's kind of like killer. Oh, she'll easily tank the whole bottle. So it tanks a little bit over a gallon, looks like. So the whole bottle is is made for, what is this, a gallon? Yeah, one gallon. So it's a gallon tank. How much is a gallon of meth? So I bought four of them for 50 bucks. So, is that 12 bucks or something? 12.50, I think. So there you guys go. Um, so this is clearly like a one gallon tank. Uh, it's like right there towards the top. You got a little bit of room, but like I said, you don't want to go like all the way up. Beautiful. So we're good. Easy to fill up. Then we just throw that top back on. One thing that I want to point out to you guys is before you actually turn on the car and like start running this meth, you want to purge the kit 
to make sure that your lines are ran correctly and that the meth is actually flowing. So the way to do that is actually remove the meth line from the jet and then find like an empty bottle or something. You can see here, I have a little isopropyl empty bottle. And then you will end up going in the car and actually hitting the test button. You're gonna hold that down on the AEM controller. You're gonna hold that down for about five seconds. You'll hear the pumps run, the light will turn green. Hold it down until that light turns off. What that is doing is actually testing and purging the kit. When you come back out to the engine bay, if you see that you do have methanol in your empty bottle, then you know that the kit is flowing well and everything is operating sound. You also wanna repeat the same method with the actual jet itself to make sure that the jet is functioning properly. So go ahead and remove the jet from the charge pipe, put the line back into the jet, put the jet into the empty bottle, repeat the process. You just want to make sure that you do this before you actually turn on the car for the first time and like actually try the meth out. You want to make sure that the meth is actually flowing correctly. So you guys, here is the finished product of everything installed, tucked away, how I like it. You guys saw we have the tank at the line running through here, coming up front into the jet. Super clean setup. Got my boost tap over here. Then the boost tap, I actually tucked it underneath this ECU cover. So it's running inside and then over here, all the way through the cowl back into the AEM controller. To the untrained eye, very, very hard to tell that you're running meth. The only giveaway is the line into the jet. Everything else is very OE. It looks extremely OE. Overall, I'm super happy with the results. Um, really proud that we took the initiative to install this ourselves. Big shout out to Chris. I'm gonna leave all of his information down below so you guys can follow him. Big shout out to Brian over at Keys Motorsports for the tutorial. There were a couple of things that we did that were a little bit different than him, and I think that we explained them rather well in this video. So if you watch both of the videos and you're gonna install this tank on a Supra, you'll nail it. It's really not that hard. Like the first time we did it, it probably collaboratively took us about four and a half hours for the first time either of us ever installing meth on this car. Now that we've both done it, I could probably do it in like two, two and a half hours. It's not that bad. So a couple of other things that I wanna explain real quick. When it comes to the controller and the LED, you don't have to have this accessible. You basically set this and forget this. This LED on here that is telling you status and all that is simply an extension of this LED up here that you really can't hardly see. So there's, I have my little LED up there that I, before had over here. Now when it comes to the actual settings on here, that's something that I'm gonna iron out with my tuner. He's gonna be obviously making the maps to correlate with this meth setup. So whatever he thinks I should be running is probably what I'm going to be doing. Right now it's just set up at four and 15. The meth starts spraying at four PSI of boost and then it gradually gets stronger and stronger till we hit 15 and at 15 PSI of boost, it is full bore. The LED setup, I don't, I don't, I don't love this spot either. I've been kind of moving it around like I had it over here, relocated it over here. I don't love either of these spots because when you're driving, you have to look away to see it. It's not like you have to see it all the time, but it is nice to know what's going on with your meth kit. And this is important because for one, it gradually gets lighter and lighter as the meth is spraying. So it's just kind of nice to see, to know that the meth kit is in fact working. And then if you look on the actual controller itself, it has these little error codes. And these error codes, basically that LED is going to blink this number of times when you have a certain error. So if you're low on fluid, it's gonna blink once. If it's open, twice. If you have a short somewhere, three. Voltage, four, five, controller. So it is nice to have this LED like with invisible sight somewhere. What I'm actually thinking of doing, because you have all of this light that gets in here, obviously it's hard to see an LED when a light is right in front of it. Notice that right away when I put it up here. So what I think I'm gonna do, 
I think I'm gonna put it in here. Probably like tucked away somewhere in here and then you'll always be able to see the LED. Kind of like how you can see the charging LED all the time because it's so dark in here no matter how light it is in the cockpit. So that's what I think is gonna be my next project. It's really not that difficult. I'm just gonna pull it back out and run it down here over across into there instead of that. I think that's gonna be a much better setup. So we are running the meth obviously right now. Um, do I feel a difference? The car just in general feels really good. Um, I'm sure it did add a little bit of horsepower. I know Brian actually dyno tuned after putting meth on Bill Supra, but they only made like a little bit of horsepower because it wasn't tuned for it. It's really important to remember that like if you're gonna run meth, you need to have a meth tune for that meth kit. You're really not taking advantage of a meth setup unless you have a tune for it. Because all the meth is doing is lowering the IAT so you can run a more aggressive tune with more aggressive timing. Now like I said before, it's important to make sure that you don't run out of meth when you have that more aggressive tune. That is when you run into problems. And in addition to that, the meth is basically steam cleaning the engine. So it's not like it's bad for the engine at all, even though I don't have like a meth tune set up at this moment. So now that we have the meth kit installed, we are going to be getting into the tuning and that is gonna be happening, I think next week. Um, I have the tuner ready to go. I sent over my requested maps. I'm gonna have four different map setups, um, 93 with meth, 93 without meth, E30 with meth, E30 without meth. So that way I'll have four different map setups that I can choose between and then we'll really get to see what the actual gains are from adding a meth kit with a proper tune. If you guys recall, we made about 10 horsepower more with the added exhaust without running E30. Now when we ran E30 before the exhaust, we were making about 480. So if I had to guess, I'm somewhere in the neighborhood of 490 wheel before the meth. I'm gonna assume that we are right around 500 wheel horsepower without having this tuned for meth. So we are for sure going to be in the 500 wheel horsepower range um, when we actually get this tuned for the meth. I'm super excited about that personally because we don't even have the Pure 800 turbo on this car yet. And to see 500s is just, it's just insane to me. We've really only done a couple of modifications at this point and we're already seeing fives, which is just, Mind blowing. So yeah, you guys, overall a fantastic experience putting this meth injection kit in. I'm really proud of myself and Chris and like the fact that we did this by ourselves just feels really, really good. I learned so much installing this meth kit and doing the research and figuring it out. I learned so much and that is what really, really gets me hyped up. So you guys know what happens next. We're gonna be tuning, get excited, man, get ready this car, dude, and we're making huge gains. After we get into the 500s, I'm gonna be dipping back into some aesthetic modifications so i have some carbon parts i'm going to be adding and then i have new wheels and tires so it's going to be a good one you guys everything you saw in this video is going to be linked down below huge shout out to chris for helping me out huge shout out to brian for sending out the aem meth kit what a sick stealth setup anyways thank you guys so much for watching the video please do subscribe comment down below like this video hit that bell notification just like that this video is over and we're out Peace.